Welcome to episode 6 of action RPG game in Unity. Attack speed and enemy behavior. In last episodes we have implemented an attacking of enemy, but right now character attacking is as fast as you can click. We want to limit the attack speed by some kind of value. Open attack handler. Inside create a serialized field called default time to attack, with default value of 2. This means each swing of attack will take 2 seconds to do, without any modifications applied by character attack speed or buffs or debuffs, etc, etc. Then create local variable called attack timer. This is a timer between attacks. If it is higher than 0, it means character cannot attack. The moment it is lower than zero, our character can attack. To avoid any possible error with float, let's ensure our value does not tick down when it reaches less than zero. So after attacking the target, we want to force the player to wait for few seconds before he can attack one more time. In the process attack, after you attack the target, set the attack timer to be equal to default time to attack. In the editor make sure the, the default attack time is set, and let's test this. Good. Now no matter how fast I am clicking, my character will only attack the target every 2 seconds. Let's add new statistic called attack speed in the character. But here is the problem. Attack speed will be a modificator value. It will be representing a value which will multiply the time to attack, and it should be represented by a float variable. But our stats value only use integers, so let's introduce float as a variable inside stats value. Add the bool to identify if this stats is float type or integer type. Then we need to create the constructor for float stats value. So let's overload the stats value constructor with the one which have float type in its parameters. Add the instance of the attack speed into our stats list. Because attack speed is a reverse multiplicator, default value will be 1. If this value is 2f, it will mean our attack time will be halved. And if it is 0.5, it will mean our time to attack will be 2 time longer. Good. Now we want to apply effects of the attack speed to our attack timer in the attack handler. For this, let's create method called getAttackTime, which will return time to attack, where we will multiply the default value of attack time by attack speed of the character. 
and later on inside this method we will be applying all other modifications to the time to attack. Buffs, debuffs, stuff like this. Use this get attack time method instead of default time to attack variable. Let's test this. If I set the attack speed to be 2, it will make our attacks takes longer to swing. My bad, we supposed to divide the value instead of multiplying it. Because the higher the attack speed value, the less time it should take to swing the sword. Let's test this. If I set attack speed to P2, we will swing our sword faster. If I set it to be 0.5, we will swing the sword slower. Good. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured like those cool people. You can see on your screen right now. So today we want to introduce enemy behavior in our game. We will start with simple chase and attack algorithm. Before we begin implementing an enemy behavior into our game, we should prefab our character. While we're working with the project, I think it is a good moment to clean our root folder, because it is start to get a little crowded. Keeping our resources in the appropriately named folders is the key to well well organized project, which is easy to navigate and find stuff. Good, now select the enemy and without any mercy delete it. The reason why we delete him is because right now we are going to reuse our player character prefab for enemy. We are doing this because there is really not a lot of difference between player and enemy. Both of them are characters with stats, both of them will have enough agent. And we'll have an attack handler. Difference is the source of input. In player case, it is player input from mouse or keyboard or any other input device, while enemy will be controlled by AI. So let's instantiate a player prefab on the scene and modify it to serve as an enemy. Drop the player character on the scene. And now we want to disassociate this object from original prefab. So select this object and click unpack completely. So this will remove association with the prefab, so we can easily modify this object to be our enemy and Unity will not try to update the original prefab, which is our player character. Let's rename the object. Remove all the input components from the enemy object. and add interact component so we will be able to interact with this enemy. Let's try to test this. Good, essentially it should work as before. 
Now we want to make our enemy attack the player. So select the enemy and create another new component called AI enemy. Open newly created script. We will be commanding our enemy to attack the player. We need to catch the attack handler. Then every 4 seconds we will call an attack of the character. So create a new serialized field called target, which we will use to reference player character. And now let's make a very simple system where every 4 seconds our enemy will attack the target. In our case it will be player. And we have a problem. Our attack handler accept interactable object instead of the character as an attack target. Because we are attacking character in the world, we want to redo this to make it that our target is of type character. Now in the AI enemy send the character as a target of attack. Then in attack input send the character we are currently hovering over. Let's test this. Assign the reference to the player character and launch this. Great, as you can see our enemy approaches us and attack us. And notice how we reuse already existing scripts which use both by our AI and the player. Just by changing the sources of the input. This saves us a lot of time. And helps with maintainability. So later on if you have some kind of error with for example attack algorithm. You know that there is only one place to look for this problem. So let's save even more time. You see we have an enemy health bar, but no visual of how much health player have. So let's reuse the health bar. Copy the enemy health bar. Make sure you relocate the newly created health bar. Then select the player character, because not every character will have a health bar. Want to introduce some kind of component which will maintain communication between this character and his health bar. So create UI component. Inside create serialized reference to our player HP bar. And cache the character.
then on update, update the bar by passing the character live pool. Let's test this. Good. This is very rudimental AI. Well, to be honest, not even an AI. But it's the starter. We will be expanding on this AI over the time of this tutorial. Good, this is it for this episode. Special thank you to Andrew Vilong, Ferry Pese, and this old Hashdu for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.